The Taptic Engine is new to the iPhone and you can't imagine how you ever lived without it. Then it stops working and you realize it's essential to your iPhone experience. Don't worry, I can help. Cause today I'm gonna show you how to replace the Taptic Engine in your iPhone 6S Plus. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit and for this repair you're going to need a P2 pentalobe screwdriver, a small suction cup, a spudger, tweezers, a Phillips double zero screwdriver, and a plastic opening tool. I already have the majority of the tools I need in my Protect toolkit, and I also have my magnetic mat. It helps keep screws organized and I never do a repair without it. So let's get started. When you do your repair, be sure to follow the step-by-step -step guide on ifixit.com. Not only does it walk you through the complete repair, but you can also see comments and notes from other users who have followed it, which is really cool and very helpful. On to the repair. Every time you do a repair, you want to make sure your device is off. And once you've done that, you can start by removing the two pentalobe screws at the bottom of the phone. With those screws out, I'm ready to open my phone. For the past few iPhones, we've used the ice clack, but due to the construction of this device, we found a better option. We need a few tools for this, a suction cup, a spudger, and a little patience. Let's start by placing the suction cup in the bottom left of the display, right above the home button. You should also note that there's a thin strip of adhesive around the back of the display. And while you don't have to replace it, you may notice the force touch panel doesn't stay quite so planted down without it. While still pulling up on the suction cup, insert the flat tip of the spudger into the gap directly above the headphone jack. Now you can twist the spudger to widen the gap between the front panel and the rear case. We're going to use the spudger just like this around the bottom left corner all the way to the top. And then we're gonna start over on the bottom right corner and move to the top again. Open the iPhone by lifting the home button end of the display assembly away from the rear case, using the top end of the phone as a hinge. Don't open the display more than 90 degrees. It's still connected to the top of the phone by the display digitizer and the front camera cables, which can tear easily. Now let's disconnect the battery before we go any further so we're sure there's absolutely no power to the phone. First, we need to remove the two Phillips screws holding the bracket in place. And once the bracket is out of our way, we can disconnect the battery with our spudger. Make sure to bend the connector back a little so it doesn't make contact and power the iPhone while you're working on it. With the phone open and the power completely disconnected, we're now going to work on removing the front panel from the phone. To get it completely off, we're going to need to disconnect all the cables connecting it to the logic board. And before we get to those, we're going to have to remove the cable bracket, which is screwed in place by five Phillips screws. Make sure you use an organizational tool for keeping track of your screws. They're incredibly small and can vanish easily. They also need to go back into the right place so they don't damage the logic board. And there are all those cables. To disconnect them, I'm going to use the flat end of my spudger. Start with the front facing camera and sensor cable connector, then the display data cable connector, and finally, the digitizer cable connector. Now let's move all the way to the bottom of the phone where we'll find the amazing Taptic engine. Let's tackle the bracket for the cable first. Start with the three Phillips screws and then lift the bracket out of the phone. Now we need to disconnect the cable and move on to the two Phillips screws holding the Taptic engine in place. With the screws out of the way, the only thing left to do is to lift the Taptic engine from the phone. For reassembly, we recommend you follow the step-by-step -step guide on ifixit.com in reverse. You can find all the parts and tools you need for this and many other repairs at ifixit.com and let us know how it goes. You can find me on Twitter at Gwendolyn Gay and follow ifixit at ifixit. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. And you can give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.